Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, tonight, Jay Bright is going to be giving a talk is about his Ameri American, American, Ukrainian flags. Um, and this is part of his recent work that is on the Digital Grace um, exhibition space on the elicenter.org website slash digital grace. And um, Jay began painting at an early age and was initially fascinated by battle scenes, cars, skies, and seaside subjects. He received his BA in, at Washington University and an MA in architecture at Yale. While he was there, he also took classes with artists Andrew um, Stasek and Richard uh, Little. He has studied with several excellent local teachers as well. His practice is based on careful observation. He notices irony, abstraction, and humor in the world. Decades of work on the American flag reveal socio-political overtones as well as raw beauty. He is happy to get flag photos from anyone and to hear viewer interpretations widely beyond his intentions. The North American Vexological Association published an article about his work that is available at jbrightart.com. His work is in private collections and has been included in many group and solo shows. And right now I want to introduce Jay. And um, here he is. Thank you, Jay. We turn this off. Why don't you take that? Hi, thanks for coming. I'm always happy to talk about uh, my work. Next slide. And I'm so grateful to the Ely Center of Contemporary Art for having a div digital show. I didn't know what a digital show was. And throughout the months that this has been up, I've learned more and more. Part of my talk will be about the things I've learned. I have a long relationship with this building. Uh, as an architect, I once was paid for two hours work, and I advised them to remove the display surfaces that blocked the windows, because they wanted more display. They'd covered all the windows and let a little light in. And I thought that uh, that was an improvement. And more recently, I advised on a way to get an elevator in the building. And then I had hoped to work for ECA on the renovation of the building. And I went with the FJ Dayhill to do an outside evaluation of this building. So uh, in a way, I know too much about this building. <laughs> but I spent uh, many years as a restoration architect specializing in churches. And all the time I was painting, like on vacations. And I thought that uh, it was uh, something actually that I could only do on vacations. So it was odd. There were decades went by, I'd only paint on vacations. But uh, one spring day, I was down on the Mill River, and the willows were beautiful yellow and a blue sky. And I thought, oh, I can go down there and paint that. And that like kicked my art production into year round. More recently, uh, a Memorial Day on the year 2000, I painted this watercolor looking out our front door at a flag. And my wife had gone away for the weekend. And I had all the time in the morning to just admire the sunshine coming through, the paper, the reflections on the painted door. And, uh, and I was thinking about my father, who was a uh, civilian working for the Army for his entire career in munitions. He did bomb demolition. Next slide, please. He did bomb demolition in the Pacific during World War II. And uh, somehow Memorial Day and 
as a family, we respected the flag quite a lot and its display, and he was in the Army Reserve. Uh, so it seemed like a nice thought of, of thinking about him and doing the flags. Next slide, please. And several years later, I just did like this little detail, which, which shows some of the, the same view. But I would try to do one flag each summer. And if I couldn't get it on Memorial Day, I'd give myself to the 4th of July. And then sometimes the right flag didn't appear until Labor Day. So it was like the summer was this search for the right flag. Next slide, please. And uh, one year I was down at Long Wharf and they had a huge flag over in the, uh, where they load the barges and unload the scrap metal and so forth. Um, but I found that this kind of annual flag exercise, I was painting other things during the year, but, but the flags were kind of in a little compartment in my art life. Next slide, please. I have to mention my mother who studied with Grant Wood and uh, she was interested in studying art during the depression and her father says, well, you need a way to support yourself, so why don't you go to secretarial school? But I think she lived through her kids' art. We were very musical and I remember Saturday morning art lessons in some neighbor's basement. So, I mean, I was supported in, in my work, uh, in, in my interest in art. So we're fast forwarding now, after about 15 years of these random flags here and there, I began not to have to look for flags. They would jump out at me and they would like demand to be rendered in some way. And I did many flags, beautiful flags, light coming through. And I, I love those paintings and drawings, but I began to zero in on what I call flags in distress. And, and this was 2014, 2015. I had a kind of epiphany in Guilford when they had cut down some giant beech trees and loaded them into the back of a yellow dump truck. And there was an American flag hanging over it. And it, it was a lot of bad news from the Mideast at the time. And the US, as far as I knew, wasn't particularly involved in the, in the Middle East I mean, in an obvious way. But somehow that flag and the corpse-like tree trunks and the truck all fit together in a much darker sense of what the flag was meaning. Next slide, please. And this was from an early morning uh, visit to a friend's house who had to go by ambulance. But the neighbor had, was displaying a flag in this lurid light by the emergency vehicles because the fire department had come and all so forth. Uh, next slide, please. And even in the beautiful parsonage for the town, Madison Congregational Church, which sits facing the church, they have a two-story flag. And this flag, I reworked it entirely in order to get it more blood-like, like it might be blood running down instead of just red stripes. So I mean, for me, the flag is getting darker and darker as we're moving up to the present time. Next slide. And my daughter found this billboard at a gas station, abandoned gas station in uh, Detroit. And it was twice as wide. So I just took the left half of it in the proportion of the American flag and copied exactly the rust stains, the peeling paint, uh, the, the nails, and, and it was odd, it had been painted from below, it's like the guys didn't have a ladder that day, or, or they, ran out of, they ran out of paint or something, but it still sits there, I was just there a few weeks ago, it's there. But it just, again, this kind of worn and, and uh, tired uh, flag. Next slide. And just before the last election, my wife and I are driving up Whitney Avenue late in the day, going to get something at Glenwood, I think. And this construction site of a storefront had this flag that just made my hair stand on end because it, it wasn't just torn, it was vandalized. And the contractor 
had hung it out. It was there for months within sight of the city hall. Why the Amer American Legion didn't go? I mean, it's a violation of the law to do that. But I was appalled at, at, uh, at this flag. And next slide. On January 6th, I had already planned to do this drawing, enlargement, nice big drawing. And uh, so I'm listening to what's happening at the Capitol off and on on the radio. And these, um, it's incredible as I'm doing this drawing. And it, it really felt it went exactly with the craziness that was going on then. Next slide. And then later, I did, I kept, I did several versions of this. And, and this was the, the sunlight hitting it late in the day, and this was the shade. And by using this super black uh, Stuart Semple uh, tempera, well, it's acrylic. It's a dead flat. I could get the, the faint um, fringes of the tears. And it was so nice to be able to like really pop that out. So I, this, I probably worked six months on that theme. So next slide. Uh, then the friend of mine sent me pictures of a flag reflected in a lake. And it was a tiny part of the photograph that I blew up. And then I did a big painting of the distortions of the color. And it was a blue sky day out in Madison somewhere. Uh, uh, and to me, this was like. At, at the end. I didn't know what I could do beyond that. So I mean, it felt like, I keep thinking I'm done. You know, almost done. Next slide. And so after the invasion of the Ukraine, I wanted to make some uh, little Ukraine flags to put in our windows, the size of a postcard. You know, this, and, and I like this design. And this is the first two that I did, just a simple Ukraine flag. And without thinking, I started drafting the American flag in pencil on top of the Ukrainian flag. This wasn't something I kind of dreamed of, saying, well, I'm going to do this. It was like I have drawn the American flag so many times that I know the proportions, I know the number of stars, I know how they're offset. And uh, for those of you who count stars, you'll notice there's the wrong number of stars due to a drafting mistake. Next slide. But I felt that this image to me had tremendous power. And I kept trying to get the colors better. It was too orange. I had used cadmium yellow, which has a lot of orange in it. So I went back with lemon yellow. And I liked these little blip, blip, blips in the, uh, uh, in the star field. And uh, you can see I was ready to draw another star field here that, that I hadn't really decided which way to lay it and which, how to lay out. And the, the blue was too dark, so I laid in lighter blue stripes. And that became the base, base, basis for the announcement card that I sent out to about 500 people. And I have people who like to get postcards from me every couple times a year. And sometimes it's about art. During my architectural practice, it was about architecture and, and so forth. Next slide. So I began working this image both physically, but also electrically, uh, electronically through the P Picasa image altering surf software. It's a, I think it's uh, obsolete now, but I know it. It's very easy to use. I haven't learned Photoshop yet. But I began to do variations, watching how this basic idea of Ukrainian flag has blue on the top and yellow on the bottom. Next slide. And this is the Rosetta Stone of the flags. When the US flag is upside down, it's a symbol of distress. Very conscious. I, I meant that. And I'm, I'm surprised how many people want to display, display their postcards in a way that I consider upside down. But my military trained cousin, very patriotic and so forth, he felt it was insulting to display it this way. He was going to display his 
Next slide, please. Oh, I'm trying to get the color right. We'll, we'll keep going. So, oh, here's a little thing. When, it, when it's displayed this way, I called it Amercranian. Excuse me, Am Amercranian. And back, can you back up one? Yeah, Amercranian is blue on top. Okay, go forward. Okay, go forward. And when the yellow's on top, I call it Uke American flag. So I have fun with these titles, but I wanted a basic distinction. If yellow's on top, it's a Uke American flag. Um, next slide. And I keep pursuing the color, trying to get the color right, to get the color to glow. Next slide. And I keep loading pencil. I, I like to work with water-soluble pencil. Uh, the original had uh, uh, acrylic, it had watercolor, and it had water-soluble pencil. So I keep laying this color down <coughs> to the point that it almost obliterates uh, the star field. And I said to myself, oh, that's the fog of war. Nothing's really clear. Things kind of creep out. So I, in addition to its, I type my titles have the the image number, the negative number, the file number, so I can go back and find them. Because once I've jazzed these around, they 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 go quite far, as you'll see. Next slide. So I call this black stars, and this has the right number of stars. But I then use that blank panel over there, and I call it crisscross. You know, who, who knows what it means? I mean, it, it just came. Next slide. And here's one with blue stars. And Picasso has this wonderful setting called neon. You can crank up the neon, bam, the blue explodes, the yellow explodes, much richer than anything I could get with a paintbrush. And oddly, or maybe not so oddly, because you can see in, on the poster, if you try to print that on paper, it gets dull. No matter how much you crank it up, it, it's a luminous image. And I said, ah, oh, it's a digital show. These live on the computer screen. And that also means they could be enormous. They're not just four by six, five by eight. And I would like it if people would get really close to their computer screens and like bathe in, in the blast of color. Because I have an idea to have these really huge, a lot of fun. I just don't want to take the time to paint them because I can go bloop, 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 bloop and do six studies in 30 minutes. Next slide. And you know, you say, well, is, is that the other one upside down? No, it's different. Can you back up one? Yeah, go back. You see, you get almost uh, ultramarine here, a little shade of purple. OK, go forward. Here you're back into these blue-greens, eerie green. And now I've got the yellow that I want. I want the yellow to be screaming. Next slide. And then I push the button called heat. Heat takes all the warm colors and makes them red. It takes all the cool colors, makes them blue. But it lets some of the undercolors uh, flicker through. And this just blew me away. Uh, I like the idea of a reflection, something light reflected in water that's, that's blue. So I began to work that. And um, I tended to call the all red flags bloody flags. Next slide. And then. When the stars are on this side of the American flag displayed right side up, it's called the battle flag. And that's because troops going into battle should have the stars on their shoulder going that way. It's the backwards way of displaying the flag. So I, I call this one battle flag reflected. And here I'm cranking up the saturation again. There's no pencil work. There's no paper. This doesn't exist anywhere except as a file or as a glossy print. And I have a gallery book uh, here tonight that you can actually flip through and see all these images as glossy photos. 
I didn't want them to be glossy photos. I wanted them to be beautiful matte prints, but they were dull. Only with the gloss could I punch the color even close to what was on the screen. And uh, still the screen just shouts what I'm trying to deliver better than anything else. Next slide. Oh, I love this one. This just, it's like, whoa. And, and, and you can't print this green, or I couldn't with my you know, crude printer and you know, so-so laptop computer. Um, but I like that I could control all the production of the digital files. Um, I know better photographers and better printers might get close to this, but I couldn't. So it, lived, it lives as a, in a virtual show in a very beautiful way. I think this is really one of the most beautiful images. So even though I'm horrified by the Ukrainian war, there's, there's a beauty thing that keeps sneaking up on me. Next slide. And uh, this, this is one of the bloody flags. I found under some conditions, the blue just got simplified. The, the stripes in, in the blue disappeared, and you got this wonderful, almost like a flower bed uh, uh, in, in the bottom. Next slide. And I love this one, where the yellow now has become army green, and this gorgeous, gorgeous array uh, of the uh, uh, top part of the flag. Next slide. I found under certain controls, the blue dulled to gray. And it, it got very somber to me, which seems to me where we are right now. And this is one of the last images. I mean, I, I love those beautiful ones, but I found myself going back and somehow the gray ones were like hitting the note that I wanted to hit. Next. And then I started combining the flags. And when there was two, I called them a duet. And when there's four, I called them a quartet. I like those musical names. And I like to think of four movements of a symphony. And uh, uh, you know, you. Up till now, maybe you saw this one flag in the lower right, something similar to that. But because I can produce all these variations, I have over 100 images just as I'm pulling this. And yet there's certain images that just aren't right. So they get an X. You know, They don't get up on the screen. Next slide. There's a cartoon that a friend of mine sent about flags and the 4th of July. This was supposed to be early in the talk, so people would laugh. Uh, but I think it's quite wonderful with the traffic and the boats sailing around and the blue part of the flag, showing that you don't have to take flags all that seriously. I may, but my friend Don Watson, an architect I worked for, a very good cartoonist and a good watercolorist as well, um, I felt this was a kind of a good way to break part one and part two uh, of this talk. Part two is what I asked people to do with the postcards that I sent them. Next slide. Wait, I said, put, take a picture of this in your window and send it to me. Well, it's amazing how many interpretations of that simple phrase. I was ex expecting to get a lot of windows with the postcard facing out taken from outside. That, that's kind of what I wanted. Next slide. But people kept putting it in their doors. So I began to think, what if I could get every state in the union to display a flag in the window? That was my goal. It's another high school friend, Susie Passman, in New Orleans, in her front door. Next slide. This is uh, my cousin in Portland, or Oregon, nicely reflected with her dog. Uh, and it's, again, they're not putting it in the window, they're putting it in the doors, but it's at the entrance. It's at a place that'll be seen. I like, I turned out, oh, I, th I like that idea. Next slide. This is New Market, Alabama, Essex, Connecticut, front door, and she has the wit, of course, postcards go in the mail slot. So I don't know how long that card stay there, but I don't care, because I have this image that I can say, Essex, Connecticut. And the, 
I said, is that Essex green, which is a famous Benjamin Moore color? But in fact, it's fine paints of Europe, chrome green. But the beautiful antique door and, and this, the uh, card displayed. Next slide, please. Uh, my cousin in Aurora, Colorado, uh, sent me this. Uh, again, it's the side light of his front door. And, uh, you know, it, it becomes fascinating what's in the reflection uh, in the glass. Next slide. And this is a cousin that lives in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. And uh, here I had a double, double flag that I gave him that I put in. And it's quite cold in Pottsville, so I used the cropping to, to emphasize the temperature. Next slide. Uh, another cousin, Roslyn PA, and he's the one that insisted on having the uh, stars on the top. And I thought getting a real flag in there was like extra credit. So, so I, I like the conversation when I can get real flags in. Next slide. Uh, this is Greenville, South Carolina. Next slide. This is the up close. And I'm just blown away at the reflections in this, this image. I mean, it, uh, to me, it's gorgeous. Next slide. Uh, this is Phoenix, Arizona. So this is the Jasper Johns effect. She had a, a printed flag, and then she put the postcard over it. So she had sort of flag within a flag. And she said her, I guess she lives in a big building, that it wouldn't show if she put it in her window, so she put it on these bricks. But I would never have imagined that would come back from my request. A view from inside their house looking out, where he just installs the postcard in his little Frank Lloyd Wright replica stained glass. And I told him he would get the architectural award uh, in, this, in this project. Next slide. And this is a daughter of the friends of ours, uh, Claire Gillis Grace, excuse me, Eleanor Gillis Grace in Newfane, Vermont. And I said she would get the beautiful scenery award for uh, this uh, presentation of the assignment. This is kind of what I had in mind when I said put the card in your window. But I got so many other interpretations. Next slide. Uh, I have a person that helps me with graphic design, and she's out in um, Longmont, Colorado. And so she's, she's quite witty. So by putting it in her car window, she complied with my request. But I had no idea somebody would put it in their car window. Next slide. Uh, this is in West Virginia. Uh, it was the neighbor of Mike Steiner who did the uh, flag in Chevy Chase, Maryland, the Frank Lloyd Wright glass. And you know he sees it as just a, something. Yes, it's in his window. And you can see out the window, which is kind of interesting. Uh, took me by surprise. Next slide. And this is in. Uh, New Haven, I took this shot uh, the way the fr friends of ours who bought one of these uh, double flags uh, displayed it. Next slide. Uh, this is the other one from Wendy Breton in Maine, Bridgeton, Maine. And the Circle Camps program actually built a fence on her property and did some other uh, home improvements uh, as, as a thank you to her for all she did for the program. So they got a little plaque on the fence, and, and she put the flag celebrating. And then her husband does all this work with his pickup truck for us, moving baggage and luggage and so forth. So this is another Bridgeton, Maine, Wendy Britton. Next slide. So Cindy Carlson from WMNR said, oh, I'm going to South Carolina. I'll take one of your cards and, and take a picture of it. Why? Well, didn't mean hold it up in front of the landscape, but that was her interpretation. And then I said, oh, she has it upside down. Next slide. I said, I can fix that. <laughs> but uh, my daughter says, uh, she's an artist too, uh, she said, no, no, you can't uh, control how people display your work. I'm another architect, a friend of ours, uh, sent me this one from Milford just the other day. And I like the way he lined up the horizon 
and the blue sky, and he, he didn't have it upside down. And, and uh, I just, again, felt like, OK. So now it's become like a gnome that can be photographed anywhere in anything. So I, I like the way it's kind of developing its own logic. Next slide. And this is Westminster something or other, a sub, uh, subdivision or sub-city village of Vancouver, Canada. And uh, I like you know, throwing the Canadian flag in there, makes it easier. And it's some sort of very glassy building. I can't quite read, uh, read it spatially. Next slide. Now we get to my friend Alex Nemiroff. He was my neighbor for probably 10 or 12 years, near neighbor, and he was an art history lecturer. He and I would often talk about all kinds of wacky stuff. I went to all the art history lectures he gave for, for years. I worked in New Haven, and I could walk over at lunchtime. And I called him on the phone, probably in early June, and I told him what I was doing. And I said, I talked about the flags and distorting the flags, and then the idea of people putting them in their windows. And, and I, I, I kind of asked him, what, what did he think of that? What, what, what is this? Kind of, what is this craziness? And he said, oh, I'll write up something. He wrote me a paragraph. You know, he said he would do it that afternoon. I think we talked on a, on a Sunday. He sent me an email. And I'd like to read it to you because, to me, it, it like explained so much and made me think I wasn't just nuts. He says, uh, Dear Jay, thanks for your call today. Looking at the flags on the website, elycenter.org, Digital Grace, I think of how the artist makes his own nation, his own land, upside down and virtual, a real matter of actual materials. That is yet a figment of the imagination. Benedict Anderson's book about consciousness in nation states called Imagined Communities comes to mind. But the artist's imagination is beholden to no one's but his own. And even as he reaches out to those of similar allegiance, those who might be moved by seeing a flag of an unknown country and spread this sign of belonging and disaffiliation in the world, your flags do not flutter. They're small. They're private. They're on the ground. At least the first photograph in the website, which is the two, um, to be underfoot but not downtrodden is the fate and state of one's own nation, a private path of few and forgotten steps amid the worlds of conflict on which the artist drawn, excuse, on which the artist draws. With best wishes, Alex. Next slide. So to me, that just made so much sense in so many ways, I appreciate it. I even printed up copies if people want to take them home with you. Uh, it's like he had an insight. His, his father was Har Harold Nemirov, the poet laureate of the country. And his aunt was Diane Arbus. And so they had like art, art, art all the time. And he's a poet. And when he lectures about art, it's in a poetic way. So I, I think that uh, I couldn't have had a better neighbor and to have him come through, boom, with that paragraph uh, just made me go, ah. Oh. So I've talked about the how I got interested in flags, how they seem to have evolved. I've then given you his ideas, which have become my ideas, about really what's going on. I've talked about how these things were made. And I'd like to close by saying uh, the Ely Center has helped me uh, make this show about the relief for the Ukraine. All the postcards give websites that people can donate to. and. Uh, 
Could we get back to that initial image of the poster? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Ely Center, out of the goodness of their hearts, uh, printed up a bunch of these posters. And rather than get in the money stream, they're giving them to anyone who shows a donation to a Ukraine relief organization. And I have listed a few in different places. Um, who contributes 50, 100, or 150 dollars or more, uh, they get a poster. Signed. Signed by me on the back. Yes, that's important. And there's even a little QR code at the bottom that uh, you can then look at this exhibit in the future. Even though it won't be the primary exhibit after the 17th of July, it'll always be in their archive. So we're hoping that people will make donations and come pick up their posters. And if they can't do that, we'll figure some way to get the posters to them. Thank you.